Hello, Programming 11. We're going to be starting a new project today. It's going to be making the Breakout game, also known as Brick Breaker in many platforms. Uh, it was Steve Jobs' first paid gig in the industry, and we're going to make it right now. It's very similar to Pong in many ways, and I'll show you a finished product of what the game looks like. Um, we're just going to load. <laughs> it's going to take a moment because it's loading from my Google Drive. No, Google Drive. Why don't you sync faster? Well, you know, Bing's internet is not the best. Um, so we'll let this go. Uh, one of the reasons why it's taking a while, oh, there it is, is because we have an animated GIF, which is many pictures. And so that's one of the things we're learning in this project. And if you click the start, oh, here it is. We have a paddle. And sure enough, we're booping and bopping and breaking the bricks. That's why it's called Brick Breaker. And I'm not sure why they call it Breakout. Oh, oh! What was that? There's some some weird happenings with the, the audio. But anyways, you get the idea behind the project, and I think you'll have a good time with it. Here, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and lose. And we can see I'll go to a game over screen, and of course I can win if I break all the bricks. But you know, you don't want to wait for me to get to that point. Don't those animated gifts look great? It's gonna be so fun when we add those into our projects. Okay, so that's the kind of end product. But where we are going to start is <laughs> with something like this, I think. I <laughs> hope this round. Yeah, look. Oh, my intro screen is so sad without the animated GIF. Hmm. Uh, and then when I start the game, oh, there's no, <laughs> there's no bricks. Uh, the reason why we're starting here is because you can make all these things uh, based on your knowledge from Pong and the clicker game. So you can make the mode framework. Um, and that's going to consist of the intro screen and the game screen and a game over screen. Uh, you can create the paddle and the ball and have the ball bounce. Technically, it shouldn't bounce off the whoops off the bottom. Um, it should go below. If it goes below, then you should lose a life, and you die after you lose all your lives, as as often happens in video games. So you could create all that stuff without any support from me. So I'm not going to. Uh, waste your time in uh, telling you about it. You go ahead and make you know this sort of uh, level of the project. Um, and so what I'm going to talk about uh, right now is about making the bricks. So making the bricks is going to be a challenge uh, because you saw there's a lot of bricks and we wouldn't want to have to write circle, 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 you know, all the different circles and then write all the if statements, you know, about like, is it touching the ball? How about this circle? Is it touching the ball? You don't want to have to write so much code. And it turns out that computer scientists have long uh, figured this out and they have a structure for you to use. It is so much better than a variable for this type of thing. It's called an array. So an array, if a variable is like a single, um, you know, page where you can write a number down or some piece of information, then an array is like a book full of pages that you can write uh, information on on each individual page. And just like a book, an array has something like page numbers to keep track of which page is which. Um, so in an array, that's called index rather than a page number. And instead of pages, they're called elements. But, you know, I might just refer to the pages and book metaphor as we go through to help it make sense. Um, over here, I have an example of an array of what this looks like. So whereas a variable would just be a single box to hold a number, an array has many boxes. And, and we can actually define this to be as many as we want. Um, this particular array has six elements, or this if it was a book, it would have six pages. And they are numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Notice that the page number starts at 0, or the index starts at 0. That's going to be critical to remember and be very easy to forget. Uh, all sorts of little annoyances will happen as a result. Uh, notice that if it's 6 long, uh, the last you know page or index number is 5. And if it was 100 long, it would be 99, and so on. So there's going to be a little bit of trouble with that as we go, but don't worry. Just, we'll keep coming back to that idea and remind you. Also notice that you know in each box here, it's like you know the different um, variable that's storing or a different element that's storing a number. So you can store all sorts of numbers in this array on different pages, and it's fantastic. So <laughs> why though? Like what? And what does this look like in in code? So eventually, the 
uh, punchline, if you will, of why we're doing this is that a loop works very nicely to automate an array to make it so that we don't have to code every single brick. We can make a loop that will you know, count from zero to you know, n minus one, you know, whatever, how many bricks we have. And it will loop through and process all the data automatically. And so our final goal when we go to make this project is simply to have an automated brick system. One if statement, one circle function that will call uh, will be called in a loop to repeat over and over again and become automatic. That's a awesome, awesome place to get to in programming 11. And you're gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a little bit of work to get there, but when you're done, you're like, oh, this is so good. It will scale wonderfully too. We'll be able to build more and more bricks just by changing the numbers in the loop, and it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna pause there on the video, and in the next video, we'll actually jump in and see what it looks like in terms of code. Uh, you might have to remember a little bit about while loops uh, to make it work, but actually not for the next video. We'll just we'll just look at the array structure. Okay, see you in the next video.